thing is, is that you are probably highly convinced that this is you. But it's not. You are a person who has to go because you have to prove yourself to be inspirational. That you have the answers to transform the collective. That you have to be in control. That you have to prove yourself. We are doing human design for Valkyrie. What is human design? Your energetic blueprints. What's different between this and anything else that I've ever seen is that this tells you, Valkyrie, how to say your yes and no based on you. Not how you were raised, not based on what your community expects from you. But it brings you back to who you are. But ultimately, it teaches you how to say your yes and no. When you are saying your yes and no correctly for you, you are allowing your purpose to flow through you without getting your brain all involved and saying all the shoulda, woulda, couldas. So yes, human design is your user manual of life so that your purpose can flow through you. How do you say your yes and no? That's going to be the first part of this experience. And the second part of this experience is going to be getting into all of this stuff over here on the screen. Some of the numbers here, the lines, the colors, some of the words and what they mean over here. So I do invite you to stay. The longer we stay, the juicier it is. Before we begin in the human design realm, if you're going to call yourself a, a name, you are going to be an emotional projector. Now, just because it says emotional doesn't mean that your emotions all are, are all over the place. You actually have a fixed way of expressing your emotions. It's a solar plexus, but that's what you would say is that you're an emotional projector. It's just like the astrology realm where I'm called a Capricorn because I was born in this time range be between December and January. I only know that because somebody told me. So it's kind of the same thing here. I'm just telling you. <laughs> All right. The only reason why I want to tell you that is just because you need to hear it. Other than that, we're not going to be mentioning this too, too much. You're a projector. All right. How do you say your yes and no, Valkyrie? Well, it's a two part experience here. And your strategy and authority is how you make your decision. Whether we're talking to Val or we're talking to somebody, somebody in her community, strategy and authority is always how you make your choices, your yes and no, your choice mechanism. How do you go about making the correct decision for you in life? So, as you can see here, strategy and authority, two different words. So it requires two separate explanations and then I'll bring them together so that we can synthesize them and you can have a good idea of what it means. As a projector, you are here to wait for the invitation. Let's break that down. Firstly, what does it mean to wait? Waiting doesn't mean stopping. Waiting doesn't mean disengage, disengaging with life. Waiting actually, <laughs> waiting actually means that you are waiting and stopping the conditioned behavior that you've been taught since you've been born. When a particular situation happens, you've been taught to react in a certain way. But what this is saying is that what you should consider is waiting. Waiting to stop that deconditioned behavior that you're used to doing or you've been told that is correct by society to do in a particular situation. But the thing is, is that why are you waiting? Waiting means that you're allowing your energy 
to be open and available for what is to come your way. Instead of just hopping on just anything your brain thinks that is sparkly and fun at the moment. But it's really stopping that, that instantaneous commitment that you may regret later. So you're keeping your energy open. You're stopping the deconditioned behavior. And then you're waiting to see what comes to you. Waiting for that invitation. Now, invitation can be said two different ways. Waiting to be recognized. Let's explain that. Invitations could be a literal invitation. Valkyrie, do you want to be a part of this content creation? And then it is this thing here, your authority to make that decision. Or wait for the recognition. Um, recognition. It's described as what people see in you. Um, Val, you have such beautiful hair, such a beautiful smile. Val, you have so much values, so many values for the tribe. Thing is, is that what is recognized by others won't be recognized by you unless you see that in yourself as well. So you just might, you know, wipe it off and be like, yeah, he, he, he. But those are true recognitions of you. So they're seeing your energy. They're seeing you for you. And truly, when somebody recognizes you, it's kind of like you get them. So let's talk about that again. Your strategy, waiting for the invitation. What are, what are you actually doing here? So you're stopping that deconditioned behavior. You're waiting to see what life brings to you. You're waiting for those invitations or that recognition of who you are so that you can then make a decision of what is it that you want to do with those invitations or recognitions. Now, as I said before, you're not just disengaging with life and sitting there with your thumb up your pooper. You are going out and seeing if you want to go to those things or not. And once you're there, you're definitely allowed to disengage and say, nope. So your strategy is to wait disengage, decondition all of that stuff that you've been taught and wait to be recognized for your awesome. And your awesome can be described here. I mean, we can all see your awesome anyway. But this is at a personal level when described to you. All right. Inner authority. Strategy and authority, I've been telling you that this is how you make your decisions. Part one, part two. So you've waited for the invitation. Now what? Well, how do you make your decisions? This is where your authority comes in. Your authority does come from this brown triangle here. This solar plexus center. And as I said before, just because it says emotional doesn't mean that your emotionals, <laughs> your emotions are all over the place. You do have a fixed way of expressing your emotions. Okay, but what does it mean? Your inner authority to be your solar plexus. Well, what's it saying here is for you, there's no truth in the now. Now, I don't have this colored in like you do. 
but um, I can only give examples based on what I've heard from other people. So let's talk about it. What does getting clarity mean? Well, maybe you will only ever be 70% clear in your decisions and that's amazing. 70% clear? Good for you. Um, clarity could be described as making decisions with no nervousness involved or that extreme excitement or extreme bitterness, anger. So trying to make those decisions away from those emotions. So given time between the original invitation or recognition and your final answer is quite proper for you. Making instantaneous, instantaneous decisions <laughs> making instantaneous decisions is not correct for you. And we'll talk about that later. Gaining clarity. Let's just talk about a wave going up and down. It's kind of like the emotional wave. Do you really want to experience all of the up and the down? What if the down was so treacherous that if you would have known about it before you started, you wouldn't have committed? So it's talking about allowing some time to get away from that excitement or that low mood energy to make those decisions. You're still nervous about it? Maybe it's not a good time to make a decision yet. Now, sometimes we do have to make decisions. So what if there's four doors of opportunities for you? Well, maybe door number two is the most clear because you have the most information on it or your emotions are the least intense towards that or and you have gained clarity on it so yeah that's what clarity is is there's no truth in the now so you have to allow time to allow that emotional wave to flow through you so that once you reach the other side is that decision correct for you or not and your energy will tell you okay so let's put these two together as a projector you are here to wait for the invitation disengaging with the sorry <laughs> let's try that again as a projector you are here to wait for the invitation deconditioning all that behavior that you've been taught over life for what is correct in a particular moment. Allowing for your energy to be recognized and allowing those invitations to come your way so that you can then get clarity on what you want to do. Are your emotions still involved? Are you super excited? It's not a good time to make a decision. Are you super bitter? Not a good time to make a decision. Allow a little bit of time between the decision and the original ask. I want to give an example of this center here, the solar plexus. When somebody recognizes your energy here, they want it. It's juicy. And when somebody offers you something or invites you to something, well, I told you that there's no truth in the now and you should wait a little bit of time before that, uh, before making the decision. So let's just say that you were offered something that you've wanted for a long time. So of course you want to get on that because you're super excited, but I just told you that you should wait until those emotions settle down a little to gain clarity on what's actually correct for you. So 
maybe there's an opportunity that, that opportunity that came your way that was quite juicy for you. But the thing is, is that for you, it's correct for you to say, just wait a moment. Let me, let me have time and I'll let you know. And of course, don't drag it out too much. Of course, you're super excited. You want to, you want to jump on that immediately, but I just told you that it's not good for you to make decisions instantaneously. You need to gain clarity because there's no truth in the now. Now, you're like, you're crazy. I'm excited about it. I've wanted this. It could fall through. Yeah, it could. So, yeah, there's either two things that could happen here. It could fall through or the opportunity could be still waiting for you when you decide to make your decision. Now, you're like, well, that's kind of awful, that, that first one. But the thing is, though, is that, is it really? If you told an employer who offered you a job or offered you a contract, can I just have the weekend to think about it? And by Monday, they had already fallen through. Your energy has protected you. Because imagine if you had accepted the offer immediately because you're super excited. And over the weekend, they offered it to somebody else and said, sorry, we offered it to somebody else. But you had already given your two-week notice. You told everybody at work that you're leaving. You start to pack your desk and yada, yada, all this extra energy. And then on Monday, you don't have either job. So um, this waiting for clarity really does protect you. And if it's meant to be, that juicy energy that comes from that solar plexus, they'll probably want to make it a little bit juicy, juicier for you as you make them wait. But remember, don't make them wait too long. Otherwise, they will just fall through and you will miss that opportunity. But it's in your proper timing to make those decisions. So how am I to tell you or to pressure you to make decisions. All right, so let's summarize how Valkyrie says her yes and no. As a projector, she needs to wait for the invitation, wait to be recognized. And it's from there that she needs to gain clarity on what is needed to be done because there is no truth in the now. And that is how you make your decisions. For you, Val. Now, there's so many different things that I could be talking about here. And we're going to walk into them right now. Um, let's talk about these red colors on the left-hand side under the word design. You'll notice that this 50 here is red. This 57 here is red. This um, 54 here is down here. This is how all of these colors make their way down into the chart. And if by chance these single gates make a channel, a full line, that's how this definition occurs in these um, centers at the end. So it's because you have this channel here and this channel here that these four centers are colored in slash defined. These red colors here are a list of traits that do define you. You wouldn't necessarily be aware of them because um, they are unconscious to you. You are unaware of them. They may pop up out of nowhere. You might wonder, where did they come from? Now, my cat just came into the room. Now these colors over here, the black colors on the right under personality, this is also a list of characteristics that does describe who you are and they were captured at the moment of your birth. You would be aware of them because this is really what your brain thinks you are and your brain really doesn't believe that all of these red numbers exist. <laughs> right? Right? So. Let's move on. I'm going to divide this experience by 
talking about the colored in stuff and then talking about the white stuff. And then we'll run over to over here and finish up what these words say. Actually, you know what? Let's stick over here. So, I've been telling you that if you make your correct decisions for you and your energy, then you will allow your purpose to flow through you. So your strategy and authority, if you follow that correctly. So if your clarity tells you that you should do it, then do it. When you do that, then you will allow your purpose to flow through you. Your purpose is your incarnation cross, the right angle cross of penetration. Now we're not going to be talking about your purpose. That's a full different reading. But if you do want to Google it, incarnation cross, um, the right angle needs to be put in there. And these numbers at the end need to be put in there as well. Okay, so your purpose is right here in front of us. Yeah. If you make the decisions correctly for you, using your strategy and authority, you allow your purpose to flow through you with every decision that you make. So what if you do the opposite? What if you don't listen to what your body's telling you to do? Then you'll run into the opposite. You'll run into bitterness. So if you listen to your energy, you allow your purpose to flow through you. But if you don't listen to your energy, your strategy and authority, and you do the opposite, maybe because you're afraid or your brain got involved and there's all these excuses, you will run into bitterness. So, Valkyrie, I'm going to ask you, where are you bitter in life? Bitterness just shows you that there's places in your life where you're just not doing you. And that's okay. But it, it's just a key indicator that something needs to change. It doesn't mean that you need to start something or stop something. Maybe something just needs to change. For example, in my previous job, terrible boss, I was super frustrated. He got fired. I was no longer frustrated. It's highly unlikely that a boss is going to be frustrated. It's highly unlikely that a boss is going to be fired, though. So what needs to change? Well... It's moment by moment that you need to gain your clarity on what needs to change to allow that bitterness to turn to turn into success. All right. So if we say that again, you're not self-deemed bitterness every time you feel bitter. Val, this is just a key indicator that, hey, Neon billboard telling you something needs to change in your life. What needs to happen for that? Okay. Now, also, when you are following your strategy and authority, allowing your true self to flow through you, when you're following who you truly are, then something begins to emerge. It is your profile. Your profile is your behavioral costume in life. So imagine if, okay, so your behavioral costume in life, um, it's how you see yourself and um, how the world sees you. Thing is, though, is that I don't have your exact time of birth and it does change throughout the day. The only commonality throughout this is that there's a three in your profile, so I'll only be talking about that. What does that mean? We'll talk about it in just a second. But just imagine that you are on the stage of life. And you're a person who is seven foot. Well, if the costumes person gives you a costume that is for a person that's four foot eight, and you try to fit into it, it's going to be really uncomfortable. And it's probably going to burst open, rip, break. And that's what life is going to feel like. Your behavior profile begins to emerge and... Throughout your life, Val, you're going to be bumping into things. Maybe finding the holes in things. Trial and error, bonds made and broken. Um, and that's all I'm really going to say because, I don't know, maybe people might call you clumsy. Now, the thing is, is that the only thing 
I guess I'm going to say additional to this is if if society is looking out on you and and they're being mean and all judgmental, they're going to be like, Val, why are you breaking things again? What's wrong with you? But what they really should be saying is, look at you finding the error in the thing again, in the system. How do we fix it together? With, uh, without people like you, resilient people like you, there would be no structure in the world. Everything would fall apart. The Leaning Tower of Pisa would have fallen over. So you do find the holes in things, etc. Now, the split definition means that this is where you're going to feel the most pressure in your life to be the not self expression of who you are. Not self. So I actually don't have your exact time of birth, but I will tell you that it's because this energy here, this channel here, is split off from this channel here. It's not some cute little pathway that we can draw out in one little line. So if I were to have your exact time of birth, I could tell you exactly where you would feel the most pressured to be in life. So. I don't know what's the quickest way to get up to the energy if we're in your fake chart well it would be 28 or 32 so maybe you're a person who feels like they have to fight for things or that you are the person who should recognize who has the talent so that's just from your fake chart i don't know if that's from your real chart or not from your real time of birth so that's where you're going to feel the most pressure in your life to be those things. What's wrong with me? I need to figure out how to be that person. I need to figure out how to be risky and instantaneous. Ah, this is pretty much it for over here. And now we're going to run into this chart here. So I said that we're going to be talking about the colored in stuff and the stuff that is white. Now, I just want to see if I want to do the uncolored or colored first, but let's start with colored. Colored is who you are. This is what you put out into the world. This is why we can rely on this energy and why it is able to be made decisions upon is because it's fixed. It's reliable. It's never going to be changing. It's consistent to you. It's what you put out into the world whether you recognize it or not. All right, so we talked about these little uh, lines here being gates and two gates put together in the same manner, our channels. So channels are you as well. Life force energy, these centers are life force energies. All you. All right. Here in this center, you do have a very, very fixed way of understanding your own timing in life. Check out all of that color around this center here. This is a root center. You have the 41 defined 39 two times, uh, 60, 53, 54, 38 two times, and that's at least. You have a very fixed way of understanding your own timing in life, how things are going to get done. Um, people probably can't move you in life. Um, while we're down here and we're talking about this, I want to show you that 54 is right here. You're an ambitious person. This is what this gate is. So that's your shining light into the world. That's what people see in you. But at the same time, you're going to be bumping into things with this ambition. Um, I like this one too. Um, 39. It's both um, on the subconscious, or sorry, unconscious and conscious level. And this is uh, provoking. So do you like to provoke people? 
Um, do people feel provoked by you? Do... Yeah. Um, and I believe that you have the capability of finishing things because this 9 and this 53 here allows you to have this concentration, this focus for these new beginnings, which means that you have this ability to finish things. Talking about new beginnings, you really, really, really had this want to start experiences just for starting experiences, not necessarily completing that particular experience that it, that you're in. Now, that sounds very opposing. You have the capability of finishing things, but you want to start experiences just to have the sake of having experiences. I wonder when the experience doesn't go your way, if you might blame the experience on the other. Ugh, it didn't go this way because of contract or didn't go this way because this other person. And it's only because of this white line here. I could be completely out of line. I'm just asking. All right. So this here is your solar plexus. You have a fixed way of expressing your emotions. And this channel here, this is the channel of recognition, a design of focused energy where, you know, um, you have this recognition of feelings or this recognition of contraction. This is where everything starts. Val, you can't be doing 18 different tasks at once. They're all going to be watered down. If you do one thing at a time, everything's going to be great for you. Each one is going to have its own focus, its own little recognition. So if you do need to do 18 things, set aside one hour for that thing, six hours for this, six hours for that, etc can't be multitasking so when we're talking about this interesting enough waiting for the invitation waiting to be recognized this is also the channel of recognition so it is for you to be recognized within your life it is for you to have this recognition of who you are in your energy and what it is who are you well, these unconscious gates here talking about competitiveness and being a part of the or bringing those into the tribe, sexuality, uh, values, ideas, structuring, and you might be a person who is confused and dill or not, and that's okay. Now, we still have two centers over here that need to be explained. Over here to the left, the brown triangle, this is your spleen center. It's about alertness, it's about safety and security, and it's like your primal needs. It's, are you safe? Is it going to keep you safe? So, your body does understand in this very instinctual way, in a very, very quiet way, whispering way, what is correct for you. This here is the channel of perfected form, a design of survival. You are going to have this perfected form that is correct for you, that is going to keep you moving forward in your direction, which is safe and healthy for you and correct for you. When you miss those little chirps, those very quiet, well, I thought I should have listened to that. Um, yeah, it's supposed to keep you healthy and safe. The thing is, is that you do know what is correct and healthy for you. And you know what support systems are correct and healthy for you as well. Over here, this is the G Center. It's about connections, roles in life, um, direction, love. Like love, love of self, love of humanity, etc. But right here, it's um, 
This is about the behavior of self and the correct behavior of self. So you are the perfected form of being thyself. You are the gentle, the intuitive person who has clarity. Um, I bet when people are near you, they just hop in line as to correct behavior. For example, I was sitting outside at like 1 a.m. last night and I live in a place where people can easily speed and the person saw me on my deck and they easily stepped in line to correct behavior and drove the speed limit even though it was super late and they could easily speed. So it seems like people step into correct behavior when you're around. Now, the thing is, is that this is a channel that is integrative. And what it is, is it's supposed to be self-absorbed. And um, the thing is, is that it is an empowering channel. And when you are acting yourself, when you are perfecting your form, that is when you're going to be most inspirational. And that's when you are going to be recognized for your energy. Perfecting the form of what? What it is that you get clarity over. And clearly, you have perfected the form in multiple ways. The thing is, though, is that because this is an individual channel, Val, you have the possibility of feeling melancholy here. Whether you're acting correctly or not, it just comes and goes. There's nothing that you need to do about it. Even though it feels uncomfortable, there's nothing you should do about it. Just keep on waiting for your invitations, being recognized, going out and see if you actually want to dabble in that thing and getting clarity if you want to partake or not. That's what you should be doing during that melancholy. Not trying to force melancholy away because um, guess what? When you feel melancholic, which would feel like, oh, why would I even bother being this icon? I'm never going to get there. Or why would I even bother acting correctly? People are always just going to pick at me. Um, why bother having this correct behavior? I'm never going to actually get to that behavior that I'm looking for. So that is uncomfortable, but there's nothing that you need to do about it. Um, just allow yourself to move through it. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel. When you feel this way, Val... This is when something creative and brand new is starting. Now, <laughs> let's talk about creation stories. All creation stories start from nothing and then there is something. And this is kind of how it is, is that in this melancholic experience, yeah, there's a feeling of nothingness or blahness, emptiness. But that, as I said, is the beginning as something creative that's doing there was something and there there was nothing then there was something so just allow it to be be you in the meantime all right so let me give a synthesis of all of these um centers together with these two channels and maybe some of these together all right, so Val, you were a projector waiting for the invitation to be recognized for who you are. And then it is from there that you are to gain clarity. You are a person who understands their timing quite clearly. And you are a person who understands what is healthy for you. That, that correct behavior will bring you in the proper direction in life. And it is intuitive and safe and it'll keep you healthy. And you are a person who is so ambitious. And you are a person who is going to fight for what, for what is worth fighting for. Provoking those in your path that will help you with these new beginnings. Because you do have this uh, focus, this focused energy that will be recognized by those who will recognize you for that juicy energy that you do have. You have the capability to structure things beyond the confusion that you have, and you will be confused until there is no confusion. Your ideas, your competitiveness, your tribe, your tribe is 
valuable to you and what is correct for you ultimately will empower your tribe all right that is the colored stuff here the thing is is that we didn't actually go into each what these traits mean cool enough is that right here it's like what environment do you need to be in in order for you to succeed what type of people do you need to be around in order for you to be successful what grounds you in life what's your driving force in life what are your values convictions how do you punish yourself when you don't follow your own convictions yada yada there's a lot of different things that we can talk about here that's not what we're doing we're going to talk about these centers the most important part of human design is understanding your yes and no because everything else just falls into place if a person ever wants to understand what all of these little gates mean i'll surely have an appointment with you but the most important thing is to know your type strategy authority in your profile it's the most important things to know if you ever hear about human design and you walk away forever all right so we have left these white centers to the last now these white centers are called undefined or open and oh boys can they ever cause havoc in your life and let me explain them one by one so hard to decide which one i'm going to start with first so let's start with the top one here this is called the head center when it's open like this you have the capability if you're acting not self so if you're not listening to your own energy you have the capability of trying to be inspirational answering everybody else's questions or trying to be inspired what's inspirational that's a not self and you're going to be trying to act on things to try to appease what your brain thinks is wrong with you there's nothing wrong with this this openness you don't need to answer everybody else's questions you don't need to search for inspiration or being inspirational because you acting yourself and perfecting your form will get yourself recognized all right this is a scary one here <laughs> ashna this is where people um do certain tasks to avoid uncertainty so for me i avoid being an, i used to avoid being uncertain by go, not going to certain places or just clearly not talking when i didn't have the answer when i knew that i didn't know it was 100 percent fact so i would be rigid and not speak until i knew now another way of seeing this is when people are like my answer's right i'm going to impose my answer i'm correct but the thing is is that here is that you only know what you know and that is enough that is correct so there's nothing that you need to do you don't have to avoid places you don't have to research beyond belief you only know what you know and that's okay and that's enough and if that's not enough for those around you then they're not meant to be around you obviously as a content creator as an icon the more people that like you the more beneficial so you definitely want to have the answers you definitely want to be inspirational and i'm sure you feel a lot of pressure to do so i'm going to skip this one for a second and i'm going to go down here to the sacral now the whole world is conditioned to be a person who has this colored in but you don't and that's okay but what are you going to feel like here you're going to feel like you have to go 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 just like the energizer bunny 
It's going to leave you bitter. You are meant to wait for the invitation for what is correct for you because you have this amount of energy that is meant to be used on your mastery. As a projector, you're also a guide of what he, your mastery is. So when you're in your not self, you will find yourself bitter when you don't know when enough is enough. You've gone too far. Are there places in your life where you recognize this so far where you have tried to be inspirational, try to know the answers or have recognized that you have gone too far? Burnt out. All right, let's go to the square in the center here. This is called the throat center. It's about manifestation transformation. And this is actually something you and I have in common. It's completely wide open. So in the not self experience, by personal example, it's either you don't want to be seen at all or you're going to try uh, different tactics to be seen. So, for example, when I was a kid, I would laugh beyond the point of it being funny. I would continue to laugh. Or, like, I would just wear my boy clothes and just fade into the background. The thing is here, though, is that there's a lot of pressure here. And you probably have many voices. I have many voices, and even some friends have said, the way you speak here versus the way you speak there, you know, it's so different. And that's not like a hit at who I am. But sometimes people say, you kind of sound like that other person that we're just around. You know, you picked up the voice of the other person. Um, this is kind of nice having as a content creator because there's many ways that you can speak. But at the same time, it might be quite hard for you to get those things from your head out into the world because that's how it is for me. All right, here's the trick, Val. You have to wait for the invitation to speak. I do too. When you speak out of invitation or without being recognized, okay, let me talk about my brother because he's a projector. He knows about the mushroom realm, not for psychedelic reasons, but for passion reasons. So whenever somebody mentions anything about a forest, he goes into mushrooms and everybody starts to roll their eyes and they're like oh my god he's talking about it again Ugh. and people start to look around dig in their pockets even though you're super passionate about it and look at their phones and stop listening and you're like yeah people don't even want to listen to me but it is so different when you say no words my energy is completely different, but when somebody says, hey, Val, hey, Katie, what do you think? The whole room goes silent. All eyes are on you. And it's like, yeah, what, what do you think? And those two words are a thousand words. Your energy here is so powerful. You can transmute, transform. So this is quite interesting to have. It's both a burden and exciting because how can we be content creators and wait to talk? The thing is, is that you're a projector. You have been recognized for your mastery. Whereas for me in my uh, situation, my, I was, uh, I used my proper strategy and authority to hop into streaming as well. I didn't even know what streaming was before I started. If I did, I'd be like, heck no, this, this shit's intense. <laughs> but yes, a room will stop speaking to hear you, to hear your words. Oh, are you accommodated? Do you have a drink in your hand? Are you comfortable? Is everything okay? <laughs> All right. Now I purposely saved this tiniest one for last. This is called the heart center. It's not about love. We talked about love earlier, love of self, love of humanity, etc. This heart center is about commitment, 
and willfulness. And you're like, um, Katie, that's white. So you're saying I don't have consistent access to willfulness or commitment. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So that's why it's very, very, very important for you to listen to your energy. Wait for that invitation. Gain that clarity. Because if you make instantaneous commitments, you're probably going to find yourself bitter or saying things like, oh, why did I even commit to that? But you're going to try to possibly be the good girl, um, the perfect tribes person and do it anyway so that, you know, you don't let the tribe down. You're still an inspirational person, etc. So you can see how this open heart center, um, undefined heart center can cause conundrums throughout the whole chart. So this center, when a person is acting not self, they're going to feel like they're not enough. They're going to feel like they're not deserving or that they're not loved. But those aren't true. It's just a chemical reaction to doing incorrect things. You just don't like that particular experience, that version of you in that particular moment because of the decisions that you've made. You are enough. You are deserving. You are loved. These feelings aren't true. Um, when you're in your not self, this makes you feel like you have to go harder, better, faster, stronger without even being asked. In school, you were asked to write a paragraph, but you wrote two. Uh, at work, you were asked to, there was a shift to be taken up and it wasn't you who specifically was asked to do it, but you did it. Harder, better, faster, stronger. This is all about proving. You feel like you have to prove something. There's nothing to prove, not even to yourself. So that, uh, that step counter, you know, those 10,000 steps that you feel like you have to do, if that is the case. You know, that's you trying to prove to yourself that, you know, you got it. You don't have anything to prove to yourself. All you have to do is gain clarity and allow your alertness, allow your safety and clarity to guide you into the proper direction. Your clarity will tell you what is correct to commit to. So, all right, let's talk about this in a, sep a different way. Right here is idea number one as to why you should not be instantaneous. We discussed earlier here as to why you shouldn't be instantaneous. You need to gain clarity. So that's idea number two. And this is just jargon, but being a split definition, it means that you need time as well. So you should not be instantaneous. Also right here, it is quite possibly that this is the channel that is making you connected to um, all of your energy, and this is about being risky and instantaneous. So don't be instantaneous or risky unless you've gotten clarity and you feel safe and alert to do so. And if it's correct for you. Okay, so let's synthesize these not self centers together. The thing is, is that you are probably highly convinced that this is you. But it's not. You are a person who has to go because you have to prove yourself to be inspirational, that you have the answers to transform the collective, that you have to be in control, that you have to prove yourself. All right. So how do we avoid this not self aspect. Again, you just wait for the invitation and gain clarity. Use your strategy and authority to allow your purpose to flow through you. And if you're doing the opposite, you're going to have bitterness run through you and you will be stepping off your path of allowing your purpose to flow through you. while you're bumping into life, breaking bonds and um, having trial and error. I don't know if I already said that, but yeah, this is you. Thank you for listening, everybody.